In this video, you will learn how to divide monomials. Now to divide monomials, we need to understand the property of quotients. So the property of quotients in math notation says that if A, B, C, and D are real numbers, assuming B and D are not zero, then AC over BD equals A over B times C over D. So all that means is that if you have everything being multiplied together on the top and the two numbers multiplied together in the bottom of a fraction, I can break it up as a product of two different numbers. So for example, let's say we had 14 over 21. All right, well 14 I can think of as two times seven and 21 would be three times seven. So this property of quotients says that when you have this type of setup where on the top and bottom both you have multiplication you can break apart the fraction as two different fractions where I'd have 2 over 3 times 7 over 7 and that's important because from here 7 over 7 is just 1 so we have 2 thirds times 1 which is 2 thirds so this concept is important in order to simplify fractions and that's the objective of the lesson. All right, so in short, if B, C, and D are real numbers with B and D not equaling zero, then B, C over B, D equals C over D. So bottom line, what this is saying is if you see two numbers um, in common, so a number on the top and the bottom, I can simply divide those out, I'm left with just C over D. And that's what we see over here. We had 2 times 7 over 3 times 7. They both had a 7 on the top and bottom, and it's all being multiplied together, 2 times 7, 3 times 7. So the 7s can just divide out, and I'm left with my answer of 2 over 3. So either way you want to think of it, you will get the same solution. So when you have um, variables thrown in there or if it's just numbers uh, you can use either of these thought processes to simplify. So here are a couple examples. First we see 25 over 30. So if I wanted to I can think of 25 as 5 times 5 and 30 is 5 times 6. So here, because they both have a 5 in common on the top and bottom, everything is being multiplied on the top and the bottom as well, we can simply divide the 5s, and we have 5 over 6, which is my answer. Okay, next we have 22 over 33. 22 would be 2 times 11. 33 is 3 times 11. I can divide uh, the 11s out, so I'm left with 2 over 3 as my solution. Okay, 12 over 22. 12, we can think of that as 2 times 6. 22 is 2 times 11. I can divide the 2's and I'm left with 6 over 11. Now, we can break it apart like this, or it's easier if you just take the fraction that you see and try to find the greatest common factor of the two numbers, so of 25 and 30, or of 22 and 33, and then divide both by that. So for example, the greatest common factor of 25 and 30, as we learned in the previous lesson, uh, we can calculate, and that would be five. So I can divide 25 by five to get five, and divide 30 by five to get six. All right, so that's a quicker way of doing that. Instead of breaking it apart like this, uh, you can just find the greatest common factor and divide top and bottom by that number. So there's two ways to think of it, um, either break it apart and then cancel, or you can simply find the greatest common factor and then divide by that. Another example, we have negative 5xy over 10 times x. So if I wanted to break the 10 apart, I could think of that as 2 times 5. And I did that because I see the 5s would cancel. Right? 5 and 5 would cancel out the x's would also cancel out. So I have negative and y over 2. 
So the negative can go on top with the y, or it's probably better to write it here on the side of the fraction, like this. So you have negative y over 2. And that is the same thing. And once again, we could have just looked at the 5 and 10 and see that they both have a 5 in common. So I could just divide both by 5. So divide the 5 by 5 to get 1. The 10 divided by 5 would give me 2. So I'd have negative 1y over 2 times x. Or sorry, over 2. The x is canceled. So negative 1y over 2. Okay, next we see a few more examples. So here we have c to the 8th power divided by c to the 5th power. And there's different ways you can think through this problem. All right, so the way we just discussed with this quotient property is I can break apart the c to the 8th power as c to the 5th power times c to the 3rd power, and that's divided by c to the 5th power. So I see here they both have c to the 5th in common. I can divide those out, and I'm left with c to the 3rd power. For example, 7, we can do the same thing. We can break down the a to the fifth power to match up with the top. So the a to the fifth power, I can break down as a squared times a to the third, so that now the a squareds will cancel. So now I have 1 on the top over a to the third power on the bottom. And then lastly, example 8, we see here they both have c to the fourth on the top and the bottom. So those would divide out right away, and that would give me 1 over 1, which would equal 1. And we know that anything divided by itself is 1, so I can see right from here that this would equal 1, because we have the same thing on the top and the same thing on the bottom. Now when you have variables like this, there's really not a need to have to break it apart as we did here, because there is a shortcut we can do. And that is based off our rule of exponents for division. So we see here what we need to do. So what we do is we simply subtract the exponents. So when we divide, we subtract the exponents. All right. So here we have y to the 8th power over y to the 3rd power. What we do is we want to subtract 8 minus 3 to get 5. So this would be y to the 5th power. Now what if you had x squared over x to the 6th power? Well here, if we subtracted 2 minus 6, we would get a negative exponent, which is a real thing. We could have negative exponents. And that would be 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. So you could write that as x to the negative 4th power, but it's better to write it uh, without without a negative exponent. So there's times when you want the negative, but many times you do not want the negative exponent. So what I can do to make it not negative is if this top number is smaller than the bottom number, or the other way of thinking of that, if the bottom is bigger than the top, then I can write that as 1 over, and then subtract 6 minus 2 to get x to the fourth power on the bottom. Right, so if it's going to be a bigger number in the bottom, your exponent is going to go in the bottom. All right, And the other way of thinking of that is if we had x squared, that is the same thing as x times x. x to the 6th power would be 6x's on the bottom. That's 5, 6. So if I use my, my rule for uh, quotients, property of quotients, I can divide what they have in common. So those would cancel. Uh, that would cancel with this. So what I'm left with is 1, right, 1 over x to the fourth power on the bottom. So my answer is 1 over x to the fourth power. Okay, and then example 11, if you have the same number, the same exponent, we would have just 1 because anything divided by itself is 1. Another way we could think through that is the same idea where we subtract the exponents. 4 minus 4 would be 0, so x to the 0 power would equal 1. And that's because anything to the 0 power is 1. 
Now lastly, we're gonna put this all together. So let's say we had numbers and variables on the top and the bottom, and you're told to simplify this. So there are different ways you can think through this, but the easiest way probably is to begin with the numbers, so 42 and 35. So looking at the numbers, I need to find the greatest common factor so that I can divide the top and the bottom by that. So looking at the two numbers, I see that I can divide both by a 7. So 42 divided by 7 would give me a 6 on the top. And 35 divided by 7 would give me a 5 on the bottom. So, so far, I have 6 on the top, 5 on the bottom. So now the question is, with the variables, what do I do? So looking at the x's, we have x to the third over x to the sixth power. So the number in the bottom is bigger. So either way, I'm gonna subtract, right? I'm gonna subtract the bigger by the smaller. So I can do six minus three, that gives me three. And the exponent goes in the bottom because this exponent down here in the bottom is bigger x to the sixth is bigger than x to the third. So when I divide, I have x to the third in the bottom. Looking at the y's, we have y to the fourth power divided by y squared. So when I divide, I subtract the exponents, four minus two to get two. So it's gonna be y squared, and the question is, does it go on the top or the bottom of the fraction? Well, it goes on the top because y to the fourth is bigger than y squared. 4 is bigger than 2, and 4 is in the top, so y squared, when I divide, is going to be in the top as well. And then the z's. We have z to the first power over z to the third power. And if it's not written, it's an assumed 1, so that's a 1 there. And then when we divide, we subtract the exponents. So we do 3 minus 1 to get 2, so it's z squared. And the question is, does it go on the top or on the bottom? Well, it goes on the bottom because the three is bigger than one and three is in the bottom. So my answer will go in the bottom as well. So my final answer would be six y squared over five x to the third times z squared. Let me walk you through two more examples. Next we have four a cubed and that is all raised to the second power, over 4a squared, and all of that is cubed. So to simplify, I want to begin with the exponent outside of the parentheses. Now don't forget that this exponent outside of the parentheses goes to everything in parentheses. So this would become a four squared, this would be an a to the third power squared, and then on the bottom, same thing, the four is being cubed, then a squared is being cubed. So on the top, four squared is 16, and a cubed squared, we have a power to a power, so we multiply the exponents, so three times two gives me six for my exponent. On the bottom, four cubed is four times four times four, which is 64. And then a squared cubed, I have a power to a power, so I multiply the exponents, two times three to get six. So that is 64 times a to the sixth power. From here, I can simplify further. So the a to the sixth powers both will cancel out because they're the same thing. And then 16 divided by 64, uh, I can actually divide both by 16. 16 divided by 16 is one, 64 divided by 16 is 4. So my final simplified answer would be 1 over 4. All right, now for one more example. Here we have negative xy to the seventh power over xy to the fourth power. So the seven goes to everything in parentheses. So it goes to the negative x and y. So first off, with the negative, okay, we have a negative number being raised to the seventh power. So that'd be like the same thing as negative one times negative one times negative one. 
doing that seven times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, this answer would be negative because two negatives make a positive, two more negatives make a positive, two more make a positive, then we have positive times negative, which would be a negative number. So my answer is gonna be a negative something. And that something is gonna be x to the seventh power, and then y to the seventh power, over x, y to the fourth power. So from here, we have a negative divided by a positive, which would be a negative number. And then looking at the x's, we have seven x's on the top, one x on the bottom. When I divide, I subtract the exponents, seven minus one to get six. So that's gonna be x to the sixth power. And that goes in the top because seven is bigger than one and seven is in the top. And then the y's, we have y to the seventh on the top and y to the fourth on the bottom. So when dividing, we subtract the exponents. Seven minus four would give me three. So this would be y to the third power and it goes in the top because seven is bigger than four and seven's in the top. So my final answer for this example would be negative x to the sixth times y to the third power.